Hey! It's been a long time since I made you a video, mostly because I was feeling really uninspired at the end of last year. I mean, there are wars going on, terrorist attacks, police brutality, fear-mongering, climate change, artificial intelligence potentially taking over our future. And in a way, the crazy thing is that we are already living in some kind of post-apocalyptic dystopian future where all of this is going on. So I figured, you may be feeling like me, why don't we talk about our future and how we can go about changing all this madness. And I think the only way to change it or the main way to change it is that we all have to volunteer as tributes. In 2015, I read so much about automation and how that might be coming over to the workplace in the near future. Automation meaning like computers uh, doing work without the need of a human or machines working by themselves. And something like in the next 10 years, 50% of our current jobs could disappear due to automation in the workplace. And this could happen because the most popular jobs in the U.S. are things like service workers, uh, like fast food chains, the supermarket, uh, things like secretaries, truck drivers, or, or any kind of driver, like a taxi driver. Uh, these are what most people today do. Um, and sadly, those could easily be taken over by computers. They're already working on self-driving cars. Cashiers already are not needed at some supermarkets. I've heard that even some fast food chains already have like iPad kind of things where you can choose things at the counter. So imagine these happening everywhere at once. Uh, many and many of us could end up with no job. I mean, even today, I've heard like occupations that are considered safe, even like accountants, bookkeeping, like even those people are starting to be replaced by computers and by software. Like I think accountants need less and less help today because computers can do a lot of that. So it's not just like low wage workers that are at risk here, like many and many millions of people might be at risk. So less and less humans are gonna have jobs in the future which is really scary and I mean my job not YouTube I just do this for attention my real job an office job it could easily be done by computers so it's a it's a real threat it's scary as shit this could be a huge problem for everyday people what are we all gonna do to survive and to me it's obvious that if we leave this problem up to the people that have ran the world up to today they're not gonna care we are all facing poverty they're not gonna do anything about it they don't care if it's not affecting them or if they have money in the bank why should they do anything about it so thousands and millions of us people could be without a job and what are we gonna do to survive um, I think we have a responsibility to change this to figure out an alternative we have to figure out how to create jobs as we move forward into the future Now, growing up, I always heard, like, if you want to have a good job, you go to college. And so I went to college. And by the time I finished university, I realized I wanted to do two things. I wanted to have a job that used my talents and um, in a way that benefits humanity. And number two, that goes kind of along with that, I figure I realized that everything that's wrong in this world, you know, it's man-made, it can be changed. Therefore, I would want to help towards changing that. And I think most people today, they feel those things and they realize those things, but they're not in line with what actually happens after you leave college. Many of us just end up doing random ass shit to pay the rent. I people even today, many of us in our generation go to college and then there's no jobs and are actually working at low wage places like starbucks so this is all bullshit and moving forward it's up to us to change this to me it was very interesting reading uh, strange labor by karl marx because he pointed out in that essay that humans derive a sense of honor about themselves through their work but he said um 
it no longer happens because there's a disconnect between our work and our psyche. In the old age, before industrialization, uh, people did their works from start to finish. For example, if you were a farmer, you raised your animals, you uh, butcher, uh, you slaughtered animals, then you butcher the meat, and then you sold the meat, right? If or maybe even you went as far as cooking the meat and maybe selling cooked food to people. Today, however, or after industrialization came into the world, we don't do that line of work by just one person. It's like one person actually does one section only. Maybe you're just the farmer that raises the animals. Maybe you're the other farmer that slaughters the animals. Maybe you're a butcher that only cuts the meat or maybe you're a cook, you only cook. We're all doing very few things, you know, like me, what do I do all day? I write emails and I answer the phone all day long. Like, that's most of my job. I don't do the work from start to finish either. And so what that stands in the way is, um, in the old age, when that person would do the work from start to finish, he would feel proud about that final product, whether when he so went to sell that meat, that was that was his creation from start to finish, and he would be able to derive honor and a sense of like uh, that you're good at doing these things, and you would feel content, fulfilled by your job. But with this industrialization, and everybody working in kind of like an assembly kind of way, you know, I do the one thing and then you do the next. Um, we don't have a connection with our final product at work. So people like me doing emails at work all day, I don't have a sense of connection with those emails. So work on a large scale, people are not being fulfilled by their jobs. We're not deriving a sense of honor, a sense of who we are, a sense of what we're good at through our work, most of us. And he said this is why people on a large scale are going towards food, drug, alcohol, food, drugs, sex, and drugs to fulfill themselves because our work is no longer doing that. Of course, that's a very sad thing to actually understand that unless you're doing work from start to finish that in a way uses your talents and your intelligence, it's not really going to fulfill you. And the reason I bring this up is because if we are going to move into a time in history where most people's jobs will no longer exist, then there's a void and we will have the opportunity to create jobs once again. Just think about it. We could look at this transition and see it as an opportunity, an opportunity for us to create the jobs that will exist in the future. Not some old white men 200 years or 300 years ago creating jobs, but us. Going forward, we could create jobs that will give us that sense of pride once again. Because if computers and machines are doing all the soul-crushing jobs that we have today, or half of them at least, an estimated half of them, then we will have an ability to go and do better jobs. I figured the way to go about it in the future is that we are going to have to create jobs that cannot be replaced by computers. One of my favorite writers, Seth Godin, he argues that we are moving towards a connection economy and that in many ways we are already there. Let me tell you about it. Connection economy is an economy that functions on a human bond. The internet allows us to connect with so many different people regardless of geography based on only the things that we believe and think. So for example, I can make a website and start my own business and figure out my own clients and basically create a community of people that are like-minded. And many of us are already part of so many communities on the internet already. And we are part of them because we have a human connection with them. Think about how many people we follow on Instagram, on YouTube, on whatever, so how many new musicians are we discovering that have nothing to do with the mainstream because we found them online or because a friend of a friend told us about it and we just like them. So anyone can make a business today as long as we find enough like-minded people. And actually because we have so many choices in terms of businesses, products, foods, music, you name it, we no longer 
turn towards those products that are just advertised at us or towards us. We choose now the products based on our personal connection we have with them. Think about how many of us want to buy things because they're organic and they're good for your health. In this connection, economy doesn't just apply to jobs online or to entertainers. For example, cronuts. If you're able to get enough people interested in your weird ass product like cronuts, you will have a successful business in your community or whatever that is. Gluten free burgers or whatever, whatever the hell you want. If you're able to build a community, which is based on an emotional connection, then you can have a business and be successful. And we are starting to live in a world that it relies more and more and more of our emotional connection and not on how many advertisements you watch a day. And of course, the machines and computers replace jobs that are more easily easy to recreate, right? So that means that humans can continue to have jobs that address more psychological needs, um, you know, that they don't, for example, we have machines already taking over agriculture in a lot of ways, taking over the ways in which humans, um, taking a lot of the jobs that are necessary for humans to survive. And so with those taken care of by machines, um, we can create jobs that take care of higher needs that humans have. I'm going to come back to this point of jobs but I started thinking of all of this because I was watching the matrix and in the matrix they go on and on and on about how Neo is the one and Neo is the only one that can walk the weak through the valley of darkness he's the only one that can defeat the matrix and I just thought that that was bullshit because number one um, Morpheus teaches Neo everything that he knows. He teaches him how to infiltrate the Matrix, teaches him how to believe in himself so that he is able to have higher skills than all the other uh, people are able to have in the Matrix. And the only difference that the movie explains in why Neo is the savior and not Morpheus is because Neo believes. Neo believes that he's the one. and. Unfortunately, I thought this is so sad because it's so many of our movies, books, stories, culture, history, so many of these things in our culture portray heroes as an exception. And we're getting in our minds that in order to be a hero or in any way a leader, if you want to change the world in any way, you have to be special or different than other people. But I think that's a lie. I think you can change your world and everyone else's world, no matter who you are. If you just believe and you give yourself that goal of changing the world in whatever small way you can, then you can do it if you just believe in it. And media is not the only thing that takes away our power in that way. Imagine how many of us are going 20 something years in school thinking that we have to ask for permission to speak, we have to ask permission to go to the bathroom, we have to go to school because we have no knowledge in our heads. And those are all lies. We all have knowledge, we all have opinions and observations. We all have power within ourselves to to create the kind of life we want to live and to help other people in the ways we want to help them. And if we do come to a time in which there aren't jobs Who's going to give you a job? It's like you can make all the amazing resumes that you want, but who's going to give you a job? Who's going to choose you? And there will be no one there to choose us. You have to choose yourself. And this is the concept that I love most about from Seth Godin's writing, choosing yourself. In this connection economy, he sees all the successful people that have been able to create communities for themselves, whether that means online or offline, all those people chose themselves to be a leader, to be a business person, to be uh, an entertainer in any, in whatever way, to be a leader of a community. No one put them there. No one gave them a job. No one gave like read the resume and said, yeah, you can go ahead and do this. They chose themselves and they went ahead, even when nobody was listening to them, and they continued to build their business and their community. And this is what we have to do moving forward. You have to choose yourself to be a leader in whatever way that you want to become or if you want to be a business person, if you want to uh, be a politician and you want to better the political climate. You have to choose yourself.
And this is why I started thinking about this when I was watching The Matrix. It's like you have to be the one to believe that you have that power within yourself to create this new world. No one's going to choose you. No one's going to tell you. You have to do it yourself. So I think we want the best possible outcome for ourselves moving forward. We need to nurture our talents, our unique, uh, our most unique skills. And you can start doing that today. Wherever you are, you're acquiring skills. Even if you're in a job that frustrates you or that you don't feel is using your talents, I think most of us by now might have realized that everything we do builds upon the thing that we did last and the thing we did prior, etc., etc. So moving forward, you're going to gain all this amount of skills that you can put together along with your talents and along with your personality and your values. And one day when you are brave enough and you want to become a leader, you want to become a business person, you want to start your own uh, job, you'll be able to have very unique skills that complement who you are and that cannot be replaced by a computer. If you don't start to set yourself up for the future, I mean, the time is going to go by anyway. You're either going to be closer to your dream or you're just going to be an old person years from now that continues to believe that the way, to, the reason we're all living and the reason we're all going to our jobs is so that one day we might retire. Not to mention that the people that are in power today, they're not dumb. They are, they are training their replacements. They're making sure that the future continues to be how it has always been for them, benefiting them. And so it's our job to disrupt that status quo. So go ahead and choose yourself, volunteer yourself as tribute so that we may have a world that we actually enjoy and we may have jobs that allow us all to survive and allow us all to live with dignities that including humans, animals, and the environment. Choose yourself as tribute. Personally, I want to make you feel powerful. I want to remind you that all the things that exist in this world, people created them. And just as easily, people can undo them and create new things. And if we are going to move into a world in which that's going to be an even bigger possibility, then we need to be we need to believe in ourselves and know that we're going to be the ones in charge pretty soon. We're all going to grow up and we're going to be the leaders. And we're already all, all of us are leaders in us in whatever way that we have in our own lives. Like we're, we can be leaders within our families. We can be leaders at work. We can be leaders at school with, within our friends. And so just continue to build on that. Believe in yourself. Choose yourself as tribute. Thank you for watching my video if you still are. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to continue talking about world domination. Also, I want to thank um, everyone that subscribed and watched my videos last year. Uh, it was a very tough but exciting year for me because I'm finally making the types of videos that I want to make. I want to finally write in about the things that I really care about. And I feel like I am now um, pushing myself and my talents in a way that I want to continue doing in the future. So thank you so much for everyone that stayed with me and everybody that's coming on board. Um, I'll make you a new video and I have something worthy enough of your time. And in the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram. I put up like my paintings on Instagram. If you want to give me some emotional support, follow me there. <laughs> and follow me on Instagram if you're into that. And if you want to subscribe to me via newsletter as well, uh, go sign up for my newsletter, maymaylingling.com. And thank you and I'll see you next time.